Okay, I just wanted to run through a few things here, give you guys a look. Um, we're talking about an induction generator, which is basically an AC polyphase motor, in this case, three phase, it's a cage motor. Um, this is an aluminum with steel, and if you can see these separations here, this is a cage motor. This is my best performing generator. No magnets. When you overclock this motor, which is a three horsepower, three phase motor, it makes power. Why this motor works better than any of these other types of motors. Uh, this motor will make power. This is a high low speed motor and basically it's a cage motor too. You can see right there where the aluminum flows through this at, a, at that angle. This motor will not make power for any reason and the difference is this doesn't have an aluminum cap on it so no eddy currents but what it does have is copper now if you're inducing a current into the motor that would seem to be useful but it's not when you're trying to generate power now I'm, I haven't come up with a timing capacitor combination that makes this work and this is a standard single phase AC motor although it is separated just like this three phase uh, it makes power but it only makes power at about 1840 RPMs which is extremely high uh, that's a little over the speed of motor is rated at 1800 RPM um, AC motor. So it works, but it has to be over cranked. Where with this design, it'll make power at 700 RPM. And if I wire it right, it'll make 240 volts. Uh, I've lit four 100 watt bulbs with it handily, no problem. Uh, it'll make you know plenty enough power um, it does create a drag but as you can see there are no magnets in this it is basically an eddy current it's being created by this aluminum on the ends and through these little grooves that are creating an eddy current that flows around this inside of this when the motors turning uh, also it uses precision bearings as you can see here I've taken the grease, which is a heavy, viscous um, grease, out and replaced it with machine oil. Uh, rotoverter uh, experiments, uh, I learned this from my early rotoverter experiments. So it does uh, help the motor moose real easy. There is no drag at all until you reach a speed where the load is generating a drag. So, with that in mind, uh, I tried to figure out why this motor was so much better at making power than these motors. And at this point in time, it seems to be just the way the motor is wound. Uh, let's take this one out of the equation because it doesn't really make power. But. If you look at this, there's this is a standard uh, motor, which is this one. It's a high and low speed motor. It will make, I think it's 3,600 RPM and uh, 1,800 RPM. So the standard motor, the way the motor is wound is it's grouped in quads so they're not really spaced similar to 
the three phase motor or these wrap they go up here and around and tie to here and that that happens through the whole motor in sequence and then they're broken up into three subsets of coil windings which gives you the three phase so basically it runs about this this far so it runs in here comes over to the top and back into the other side so it's only jumping about four of these so where in this motor this is a field and this is a field and then this is also a field down here and this is a field so the motor itself just seems to be wired wrong for the proper induction of the motor as a generator so one of the next steps in this process is um, I will be using this motor which is really close the same number and everything as this motor um, aluminum caps so this is a, a really good induction motor but only in high speed because it's set up in this uh, quad field configuration this is going to be ripped out of here and rewired similar to this and this motor I'm going to put back together uh, I wanted to really determine why it is so much better at making power than all these other AC motors and basically it's just the windings but it is part of a larger motor uh, that will be driven by a pulse motor 